It's time to review another Defender. This time we have the 90 rated Costerman who um, is 90 rated in both pace and overall. If you want to improve your ultimate team and need some coins to do so, you should check out my sponsor IG Vault. There's a link to do so in the description. And if you use the code Kieran, you'll get yourself a nice little discount off your order. Obviously, this guy's been a popular item throughout FIFA 21. His non inform at the start was very good, and his rotated final item for the majority of the game has been, you know, a popular choice and um, right up until team of the season. But now he's been given an even better card in the game and uh, it's already under 200k. So uh, I feel like it's well priced for what it is. Um, in regards to in-game stats then, what is there to look at? Instantly you can see there is a bit of a, you know, big pace split. But um, if he was an attacker, that would be a major issue. With a defender, it's not too bad, but it is obviously going to be something that we are going to notice in game. So maybe we'll go over pace heavy chem style to try and, you know, narrow that gap. Um, his defending stats are quite nice. Good inception um, and slide tackle ratings. Defensive awareness is also quite nice as well. So that's pleasing. His physicals, I think, are good. But nothing too crazy at this stage. I feel like at this point, you know, we're just getting so many good centre backs. And I know I'm being picky here, but at least like stage of the game, because we're getting so many, you know, meta top tier cards, I feel like I have to be picky in these reviews. Um so yeah, as I say, physical's good, but nothing too uh, spectacular. Dribbling looks nice for a CB, good reaction stat, we love to see that on a defender and the passing actually is pretty interesting because he's actually got really good short passing and also a ridiculous crossing as well. Now I've got to be honest, I don't think the chances of me getting across with this guy are high but um, I guess if, if uh, the, the chance comes to him, um, we can feel confident in him whipping in a ball. It's also uh, notable he does have a high attack position in stat which isn't particularly ideal on a centre back. Has he got, what's his work rate? It's medium, medium, yeah. So that's not particularly ideal because that's going to increase the chance of him wanting to join in and go forward a bit. But hopefully, you know, he just stays back because that's what we want ultimately. Shame he doesn't have medium high work rates. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's move on to Chem Styles, shall we? So let's jump over to Footbin and let's have a look at this card. Now, Obviously, it's a centre-back, so instantly we are going to be jumping to Anchor and Shadow for our choices. And um, you know what? Although Shadow obviously does solve the pace split issue, I think Anchor is going to be the one for me. Because he's already quick enough with the Anchor pace boost. The defence gets a nice boost, which is great. And Anchor obviously brings that big physical boost, which is something I commented on when we looked at the stats. His physicals are nice, but they're nothing too crazy. So um, I feel like that area could do with a nice boost. So um, we're going with Anchor. I'll say this, getting games tonight is not particularly easy. And then when we do get a game, we come up against this monstrosity. Falls in behind. It's going to be Coleman up against Costerman here and... We read that one. I knew he was cutting back. It was just a case of how. Oh, Costerman just does enough there. I feel like we were also a bit fortunate as well. Nice, Costerman. Good to cover positioning. 1-1 one, one at the break then. Costerman's had a nice opening 45. To be honest, he feels good. Um, nothing too crazy, but um, he feels like a solid centre-back. Oh, Costerman, thank you. I was a bit worried for a moment. One more bit of defending needs to be done. Well, that game just ended in a 2-1 scoreline. Very, very scrappy game. I'd say Costerman's performance in a nutshell was okay. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Um, but Boateng was better. I, I don't care what FIFA's rating say. Boateng was definitely the more effective centre-back in that game. But that's not to you know dismiss Costerman at all. Because, uh, as I say, he, he still didn't play terribly. But... Um, yeah, it wasn't anything too crazy. Hopefully, um, bigger performances are ahead. Next up for us is this, another five at the back side. Why am I coming up against these so often lately? It's so frustrating. Oh, we knew that was coming. He did not time that through ball well and cost him and took full advantage. Don't think so. <laughs> Brilliant sliding challenge there from the German. That's been treasure. Oh, nice block there from Costerman. Oh, Costerman initially with a nice tackle on Benzema, but does well to get back at him. That's one of the things about these pacey players, that they're more than likely going to get a second attempt to make a challenge. Okay, half time in this one. As you can see, very, very tight game for most part, but we are on top due to the fact that we've been the more clinical. Costerman's had a pretty good first 45, to be fair. Hopefully he can keep it up and keep the clean sheet um, in at the second stanza. I don't think so, Benzema. Costerman makes the challenge, but it does not go anywhere near where I wanted it. 
There's a chance. Benzema not going to get past Kosterman, but Nkunku might on the rebound. Protect that clean sheet. Oh, he's offside. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. And there's full time. We do claim the clean sheet. So happy days for Klosterman and also the match ball for Martinez. No doubt in that for Klosterman. I thought him and Boateng once again were very good. But it was one of them games, and this to be honest sums it up quite well, where literally like half the tackle that I was making, like the ball was getting kicked away from the man and then just bouncing back to him. So that was a bit unfortunate. But uh, as I say, I, I thought both my centre-backs were very, very good. But uh, Jerome Boateng once again um, being the better of the two. Okay, so we've arrived at that point in the video where, you know, we actually do the player review, the summary portion. So uh, let's get straight into things. What did I make of this Klosterman item? Um, I'm actually going to start off by saying, if you run with a Bundesliga side, I don't recommend picking this card up just because I think there are already so many better Bundesliga centre-backs available in the game. Um, for instance, Team of the Season, Alaba, Tapserva and Lacroix. All better than this Klosterman in my opinion and I also think and I said it when I was playing the games I thought the Boateng who I had next to him was more impactful on the game than this Klosterman so um, yeah as, as I say as things stand if this card stays the way it is um, I don't think it competes with uh, cards already available in the game but there is a but. That's not to say that this is a bad card, because it certainly is. I actually think it's a very good centre-back. I just don't think it's as good as some of the more premium options from that same league. But still, this item is extremely usable, and it certainly does have its own qualities. Obviously, the pace is very, very nice, but I will say you do notice the pace split in game. Um, just take them a yard or two to get to that max speed. And that can uh, that can feel quite frustrating, to be honest, because uh, you know how quick he can be. And if he's not quite catching someone initially, then uh, you know it can be a bit frustrating. But he is quick for a centre back, so no complaints really in that regard. It's just annoying knowing when when you know how quick he can be, but he's not always at that pace. So uh, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. The pace split is frustrating, but the overall pace is obviously good. And um, positionally, I don't think he's as strong as other centre-backs. This is one thing where he isn't as good in comparison. Once again, not saying it's a terrible quality of his. That's why it's not in the negatives. But in comparison to the top-level centre-backs that are available right now, I don't think his positioning is anywhere near theirs. And uh, I think that's probably down to his high attack positioning stat. He just likes to, you know, creep forward a little bit more than, you know, the average... Um, centre back passing though I thought was very very nice and um, does have a good passing range both of a short and long distances so that's a positive and I also thought his dribbling for the most part was solid for a centre back it was solid I don't think I'd play him anywhere else not even at CDM but um, as I say for a centre back on the ball it feels all right so uh, that is obviously quite nice now when it comes to defending I think his interceptions are excellent they're brilliant but his tackling ability, specifically his stand tackling ability, it just wasn't complete. He's one of them players who will like come in for the tackle, get like get a touch on the ball, but not fully complete. I hope that makes sense. And that was very frustrating. And it wasn't a one-off, it was a regular thing, and that's why it was a bit frustrating. His slide tackling I thought was class, but the stand tackle, as I say, just wasn't super consistent, and that is a shame. Finally, let's discuss those physicals. Um I actually think the strength and aggression does play into what I've just mentioned about being strong in the tackle, so that's unfortunate. But um, I did like his jumping in his aerial ability, won plenty of headers for me, which was obviously fantastic. But in summary, I think it is a very, very good centre-back item. It's definitely usable, but um, like I touched on at the very, very start, there just are better um, options already available in the Bundesliga. And not to mention, there's actually you know a quote-unquote free player in objective this week, Lucas Hernandez, who's looking pretty damn good. So if you need a Bundesliga centre-back, I think you should probably go for him just because, you know, value for money is nice. But um, who knows, maybe this customer will get him cheaper and he'll become really good value. Or maybe he'll get, you know, some boosts. Germany will go on a mad run and he'll become insane. We'll have to obviously wait and see. That's the, you know, positive of these category items. Some cards might not start out so great, but um, in a few weeks they could be, you know, pretty big. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to sit, wait and see what happens with it. But as things stand, as I say, I think this is a very good card, but... Um, it just are better options available at this point. Anyway, let's wrap this video up there because I'm repeating myself. So uh, if you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like rating. Comment below any questions you may have. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next video.